Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture. In this episode, we are summarizing the eighth episode from season two of the Sopranos series titled Full Leather Jacket. It was written by Robin Green and Michelle Burgess. It was also directed by Alan Coulter. The episode first aired on March 5th, 2000. In the beginning, Sean Gismonte and Matthew Bevilacqua are working for Christopher and we see they are extremely excited about being able to work in some capacity with the DeMeo family. They are desperate to move up in the family and go to visit Richie Aprile to introduce themselves. They speak to Richie and he makes fun of Christopher's big nose. Richie tells them about the unrest of 1983 where many of the DeMeo associates were arrested and a lot of the younger crew members stepped up quote unquote, to take command. From this encounter, they both assume that they must make a drastic move in order to be recognized as key players in the family. When Matthew and Sean head over to the Bada Bing Club, they introduce themselves to Tony Soprano. When they speak to him, they start speaking about crimes they have been working on with Christopher. Tony reminds Sean to consider the fact that they may be under surveillance and that speaking about crimes is idiotic. Tony calls Sean an idiot. Later, we see Furio visits Matthew and Sean to collect Tony's 10% cut. Once Furio collects Tony's percentage, he takes an addition $1,000 cut for himself and jokes about how Matthew and Sean are living together. Matt and Sean consider what happened during the unrest of 1983 and Matt decides to take action and make a name for himself. Back at Tony's house, we see Carmela and Tony are contemplating Meadow getting into UC Berkeley in California. They both clearly do not want Carmela being far away from New Jersey. As the overprotective parents that they are, they want her to be close to Jersey. Carmela tells Tony that in the modern age, students are accepted into college if they either know someone or donate a lot of money to the school. Carmela knows her neighbor, Jeannie Cusimano, has a twin sister, Joan O'Connell, who is a reputable alumnus of Georgetown University. Georgetown also happens to be one of Meadows' top college choices. This prompts Carmela to go personally to visit Jeannie's twin sister, Joanne, at her office. Carmela tells Joanne that Meadow is applying to Georgetown University and would appreciate a recommendation for Meadow. Joanne refuses to grant her the recommendation and so Carmela goes to visit her again. This time, Carmela brings a ricotta pie. Joanne again refuses, but Carmela reminds her that she is not asking for a recommendation, but rather commanding her to recommend Meadow. Joanne asks Carmela if she is being threatened and Carmela says absolutely not. As she walks out of Joanne's office, Carmela replies by saying, thank you for this. Later on, Jeannie Cusumano goes to visit Carmela. She returns the plate and tells Carmela that Joanne has written the letter. Of course, Carmela then asks for a copy for her own records. Remember, I am summarizing the entire series, so subscribe and click on the notification bell so you are reminded when I upload the next episode. I am going to be reviewing other TV shows and movies in the future as well. Also, let me know what other TV series or movie you would like me to summarize below. Stay tuned. In another scene, we see Christopher Montesanti heads over to Adriana's mother's house. Here, he tells Adriana's mother that he regrets abandoning Adriana at the restaurant a few weeks ago. He also says he is sorry for always abusing her. Chris then proposes to Adriana and she of course immediately says yes. Adriana's mother allows Adriana to leave even though she knows Christopher has only been a bad influence on her daughter. Adriana's mother warns Adriana that this is the last time she will take her back if she has a fallout with Christopher again in the future. Later on, we see Silvio and Polly pressuring Richie into helping Beansy who he recently almost killed by forcing him into building a wheelchair ramp so Beansy could comfortably enter and exit his home. At first, Richie is upset at this command and refuses to pay for the ramp until they tell Richie the order is coming down from Tony. Then he immediately agrees. Richie builds half of the ramp and tells Tony that the rest will be built soon because he is currently helping to renovate Livia Soprano's home. In order to make up for this lack of obedience, Richie has a leather jacket he stole from Rocco de Mayo in the 70s. Richie brags about how tough Rocco was but is now missing after having an issue with Richie. Later on, we see Tony give the jacket to the husband of his maid, Liliana. When Richie drops by to drop off some food at Tony's house, he sees the cab driver wearing the jacket. After this, he grows angry and depressed 
that Tony would dismiss his gift so quickly. While waiting for Chris in a parking lot, Matthew decides to step up and be recognized like Salvatore did in 1983 by committing his first act. Matthew and Sean wait for Christopher to come out of the Skyways diner. After he comes out, Chris is ambushed by Sean and Matthew as they try to establish themselves as quote unquote real players in the mob. They shoot Chris three times as he reaches for his gun. We see Sean gets too nervous and can't unbuckle his seatbelt in time and Chris manages to shoot Sean while he is still unbuckling. Matthew is able to escape and he heads to Richie Aprile's hangout spot. Matthew tells Richie that he tried to kill Christopher as a way of proving himself to Richie. Of course, this prompts Richie to grow enraged by the mistake he made. The last thing Richie wants is an outright war against Tony Soprano, especially at this time. Richie knows that him associating with Matthew puts him at risk of being killed by Tony at this point. So Richie chases Matthew out with a baseball bat. As Richie runs him down the street, he throws a baseball bat at Matthew and this prompts Matt to go into hiding on his own. In the end, after Tony and the crew hear about Christopher's shooting, they show up to the hospital where he is staying. Here we see Tony staring at Christopher while he is in a coma. Tony ends by asking himself, how could this happen? That was episode 21 titled Full Leather Jacket. To watch the next or previous episode summary, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. It's the jacket! The jacket. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.